Hello everybody, I'm back and we're back with phase four of our how to create an environment of innovation and creativity. I hope you've enjoyed the previous video so far. Okay, here we are. I hope you can all see my screen. Perfect. So this is phase four and we are going to be looking at the techniques for promoting creativity. As I've said before, this is just high level. So I'm going to be sharing um, three of the techniques that um, we use uh, for understanding and promoting creativity because you have to have some sort of technique that people can follow. Um, so let's kick right on. So let's look at three of those techniques, as I said. Um, the first one being a mind map. And the second one being escape thinking and the third one being brainstorming and i'll just high level cover all three of these techniques so let's look at the first one um if you were faced with a problem stating that um what are some of the alternative uses for a paper clip if you had to start writing a list you could become bored or you would probably slow down alternatively you can use a mind map which allows building on previous ideas, attributes, or stepping stones. So let's look at the paperclip. What could you be using it for? A paperclip is pointy, okay? So it could possibly be used for uh, as a drawing pin, okay? So it's got points and you can use it as a drawing pin. It has links and it links together so you could use it as small chains okay and you could be making a necklace out of those small chains okay so see where this is going so you're building on it links together there's small chains and eventually you could come up with a necklace so the third thing it is flexible yet again you can bend it you can do something with it you can link it together you can yet again create something else from it a paper clip could conduct electricity and therefore it can become an electrical probe. So I've seen people doing lots of things with paper clips. I've had paper clips in my hair, tie my hair up and put a paper clip in. So it can become a hair tie at the end of the day. So just by using a mind map, you can use a product and see where it's going and you can unpack it and work with it build on it build on previous ideas and that really is what mind maps are all about okay this one escape thinking edward de bono says work with the things that you take for granted and state it in an opposite way so we call it provocations and a provocation is an experiment that happens in the mind and I've got a little man there and his name is Poe. And this, this all comes from um, Edward de Bono's book around creative thinking. And the word Poe is the symbolic word to indicate that the sentence is intended to be a provocation. So I'll, if I say Poe in the beginning of the sentence, it means behind it is going to be a provocation. A provocation in, introduces instability. And it allows a new stable state to be reached. A provocation state seeks to take our perceptions away from the usual direction. Don't just think of the obvious answers, the answers that you already know. Be brave and bold and state it differently, state the opposite. The third one is brainstorming. I'm sure you've all heard about brainstorming. How do you do brainstorming? It's a form of creative thinking. It works by merging someone else's ideas with your own to create a new one. You're using the ideas of others as a stimulus for your own. Brainstorming is an excellent way of developing many creative solutions to one problem. It works by focusing on a problem and then coming up with very many radical solutions to it. Ideas should deliberately be broad and odd as odd as possible and should be developed as fast as possible. So that means you're throwing ideas out there. It's not about quantity, it's, I mean quality, it's about quantity. You want all the ideas to come in. 
Brainstorming is a lateral thinking process. Thinking laterally, okay? It is designed to help you break out of your thinking pattern into new ways of looking at that's things. it for phase four i'd like you to go away there's always an activity at the end of everything and once again these are just high level we are going to be doing a course in august that will be the full course on all these things and it will be unpacked in detail but these exercises i'd like you to go and do so that when you come on the course you already have done some exercises and we can have a lively debate around it so this one is a little bit of group work. So we want you to go and choose a partner and draw up a list of six common problems in your workplace or in your life. Doesn't matter. In a random order as they come to your mind. So don't overthink it. Common problems that are coming up. Please choose one problem that you've identified and using one of the techniques that we've discussed here with your partner, unpack the technique chosen to come up with a minimum, a minimum of three possible solutions. If you come up with more, no problem, great stuff. But come up with at least three possible solutions to the problem that you've identified and bring it to the course and we can continue to unpack it, but use these three techniques. That's the end of phase four. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in.